just asking who's culture i remember like i think this was the bangalore let fest uh, and somebody asked me i think something on the lines of um so was this not a golden age you know and i was actually being perfectly serious in my follow up question where i said okay who's golden age um because i want to understand right i wanted and i wanted the questioner also to to kind of inquire within their own mind when you think of a golden age who is it a golden age for um and this idea that you know classical indian culture is represented by these particular artifacts from royal courts i think does not do justice to just how big the world of ancient and medieval india was but the tragedy of it is that most of the little people if i can use that term left so little trace in the sources that we rely on and that's a problem with the way that we are thinking about history once again is that we think of the main historical primary source as being inscriptions um so it is inscriptions that come from temples that are made by elites that are trying to speak to other elites you know going back to what i was saying earlier about like why are these texts being produced for whom they aren't being produced for kings to tell people in the 21st century that oh we were so devout remember us and be devout they were telling their rivals that i have the favor of this particular god and why don't you back off or you know something on those lines um as for what the little people are doing we can't answer that question because a king is not going to be talking to the little people they aren't even part of his target audience um the answer to that is to do archaeology um and i think that that is something that all governments since independence must really take the blame for even though there has been some archaeological work on you know ancient india bronze age india iron age india there just has not been enough work on medieval archaeology um like i've been again for my chola book i've been trying to like look at the archaeological work that's been done and even in gangai kondo chola puram which is at one point the capital of 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 a massive south indian empire the excavations that have been done are like very tentative you know it's only particular parts of the royal palace we still have no idea of the layout of the entire city um and if you were to look at for example um pop popular history writers in mexico popular history writers in the us in in the uk in france in 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 spain they have this like enormous wealth of like concrete in detail about like how people live their lives they have examples of like you know the mortars that they were using to like you know pound um to pound flour for example um they know what their medieval water mills and that kind of thing look like but we just have such a vague idea i remember i had this very profound like an humbling moment when like i i i i was looking at a book about indian sculpture and for the very first time i actually saw pictures of chisels that have been excavated from mamalapuram um which is this great pallava site in south india and i was just staring at those chisels because up till this point i had never actually seen medieval tools that were used to build these colossal temples and so on that occupy such a big place in our imagination today and i was just imagining the hands that would have held this chisel you know who was this person uh, was he like tall or was he short was he like what did he look like you know did did, did he have like a did, had he ever lost a finger from like chiseling things you know what was his family like you know where did he learn his stuff from do you like to do put things in a particular way who are these people we just they just don't survive in the historical record because they are completely overshadowed by the people who ruled over them